It's David Hoffman, documentary filmmaker. And back in 1989, I interviewed hundreds of people for this television series I was making on the 1960s. To understand the 1960s, said I, you really have to understand the 1950s, which is when people grew up. So there's this black guy in Farmville, Virginia. He's older than me by a lot. And he's unbelievably straight shooter, clear thinker, very profound what he says. Why'd I pick him? First of all, he's a great storyteller, but also Farmville, Virginia, Prince Edward County, Virginia, 1953, the Supreme Court passes Brown versus Board of Education, stopping segregated schools. What does Prince Edward County do? Shuts the schools, all the schools. This guy's a school teacher in a black school. He tells you that story in which you're about to see, and he tells you about one other thing which I didn't realize. When the black servicemen came back from World War II to their towns, having fought for freedom, having fought in an integrated military, they expected things to be different, but they weren't, particularly in the South. The soldiers were treated like they had been treated before they went to war, second-class citizens. That really shocked this guy. So I run him now because I think he's a beautiful person and the way he speaks is unique and he's really blunt about integration, good and bad, about what the black schools were like at that time. I can remember reading about a black veteran who served honorably overseas and came back to this country and in an altercation with the sheriff in one of the southern towns, the sheriff attacked him with a blackjack and beat both of his eyes out. Um, oh, oh man, look, uh, the incredible mistreatment of black servicemen in this country before they went overseas is, is a shameful chapter in American history. Um, and unfortunately, some of us so black people who were in position to make changes were pawns of white people and did not, for example. I don't want to say anything that will make you liable, but I think I can prove all of this. General B.O. Davis was uh, sent down to a camp in the Deep South. I don't remember which one now. So the constant barrage of uh, letters from the parents of a servicemen, the wives and sweethearts of servicemen who were in that camp and, and living under the most incredibly uh, bad conditions. If a black woman, I check this out, went down to this to visit her son or her boyfriend or her husband, she was required by the town authorities to carry a pass. If she were arrested without, if she were stopped without the pass, she was subject to arrest on charges of prostitution. Can you imagine this? When they returned to this country, they found uh, business as usual, the same uh, routine and, and so forth. Uh, things had in no way improved. And it put this country in the ridiculous position of fighting fascism overseas and, and uh, promoting fascism at home, you know, it's, uh, it was um, a hypocritical, uh, you know, typical American hypocrit you know, uh, hypocritical behavior. Uh, when I first uh, heard about integration and heard that it may possibly one day be the, you know, the way things would go, I had very mixed feelings about it. I was no more anxious to mingle with white people than I'm sure many of them were anxious to mingle with me. I felt the same reservations, the same um, prejudices, I guess I may, I may as well say, that uh, any of them felt, you know. Um, so I was not at all thrilled over the prospect. But um, as time went on, I began to realize that possibly this was, after all, the only way that the terrible injustices could be somewhat alleviated, um, and so more and more I began to favor the idea of integration. But I think many black people felt just as I did, they really didn't want any parts of white people. They would have preferred if it were, you know, I've often thought, if separate but equal had been a reality, you'd never had a, a, an integration struggle. Black people would have been, I think, would have been very, very satisfied to maintain, but just make sure it's equal. And that's where the problem lay. Uh, our, our Moton High School, a, a joke man with a couple of tar paper shacks, which were unsightly, 
and uh, compared to the uh, Farmville High School, you know, this this is the idea of separate but equal. Um, uh, books so so uh, torn apart. In one case, a friend of mine who was supposed to teach chemistry, man, the only books he could get, uh, he had shreds and particles and pieces of books, and by linking up in his classroom, he'd pass out what he had. By linking up together, the kids were then able to to get together enough material to. These books have been discarded by the white high school some years before and passed on to the black school. Now this points out the, the weakness and the corruption of the principal who was black. This teacher, friend of mine, not knowing the chain of commands, his brand new teacher, uh, went to the superintendent and said, look what, look what I've got to work, I can't work with it. How can I teach chemistry with this junk? And immediately he got a brand new um, set of books for his classroom. Now, the point of this is this. That principal could also have done that, but it was better for the principal to report a surplus at the end of this. That happened. Well, I don't want to get too personal, but I could cite you another instance in Farmville of the same kind of thinking. It's better to report a surplus at the end of the year, thus protecting myself, make myself the fair haired boy downtown, than to go down and ask for materials that are absolutely, desperately needed by the children. Just to pass and look at the physical plants would have told you what a fallacy, what a what a, a joke, what a hoax separate but equal was. There's no way in the world that any reasonable person could compare Moton High School, as I said, a, a small brick building, maybe four, maybe five classrooms, supplemented by two tar paper shacks, which were ugly and unsightly. There's no way in the world you could have compared that with um, Farmville High School that, uh, look, at, at Moton, the, the, uh, the, the outlying buildings were heated by wood stoves. Now, one of the teachers, in addition to teaching classes, in addition to driving the school bus, had the additional responsibility of keeping the fires going in, in these buildings. Um, at the White High School, they had a janitor. You know, the, I mean, the disparity was, uh, you know, just ridiculous. It was absolutely no, no separate but equal. It was separate, all right, and very unequal. I, I foresaw, I, I thought I saw that it might come to bloodshed, and I wondered if it were worth it for any single person to die for something like that. As I said, my thing had always been separate but equal, but truly uh, equal in a meaningful sense.